in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. This energy that you have to create. It's so you have tireless energy. It, it reminds me a bit of Alice Cooper because, and I know that the both of you have a long history uh, together. I mean, I think you went on the Welcome to My Nightmare tour. There it is, Vic. He got me on that one. He said, "Look, you've already been on the tour." I think there was a couple pictures that I had put up earlier this week as far as promo and. It, it's such a relationship, such a special relationship. Does it come from Detroit or does it come from the love of energy and music? And there you guys, I mean, I play, I know that poker game. I might, did you ever get to play poker with, with Alice on those, on that tour? I beat her many times. Okay. Um, <laughs> Alice and I, we go back a long way. We do have a connection. We always have a uh, part of it's Detroit. Part of it's just, we, we just get each other. We just get each other. You know, we've always spoken the same language. He's very straightforward, same as me. Um, we don't like to be boxed in. We, we we talk all the time about this kind of stuff. And I have the great privilege of giving him a black eye. Aha. Hold on. Hold on that story. Hold on, because I actually, that is part of the show. That is part of the show. We are nearing up where, honestly, all week, folks have been piling in questions, and we had to weed them down to just a few but now, folks, it is time for a little bit of Let the People Speak. Can we hear it? <laughs> so I'm going to start off with that because this comes from Gary Funeral. And it's a, it's, it's a Furnaville. It says Fern, 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 Funeral. Gary Furnaville. Is it true? Or false that when you were on tour with Alice Cooper in the early seventies, that you and Alice were so bored, you bought some toy dart guns and had a toy dart gun f game, and you had a fight in the hotel, and you actually shot his eye out, or you gave him a black eye. We. This is absolutely one zillion percent correct. And by the way, that. I am. I am a terrific shot. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> And we did have a dark gun fight and even went into the corridors with mattresses. I mean, this got serious. Mattresses covering us and in and out of rooms and blah, blah, blah. We ended up in one of the rooms and Alice hid behind a TV, okay? I'm a good shot. He made a mistake. He stuck his nose out to look to see where I was. <laughs> well, you know. And I went, oh. Oh. Gave him a the nose eye. gives it away all the time with Alice. You know that. <laughs> it does. Um, gave him a black eye. And he always said to me that his first thought was, ouch. And his second thought was, good shot. <laughs> so, and that night on stage, he wore my T-shirt and he told the audience, this is out of respect. <laughs> I love it. Good shot. And you know what? Didn't you, did you, play, did you play Annie Oakley in, in some sort of West End thing? So you had to be a good shot. You earned. Sure. I am a good shot, though. And I, I was a good shot since the first time I picked up a gun. We were doing clay pigeons. My ex-husband, that was his hobby, and he took me out one day, and I didn't know I was good at it. And he said, uh, I'd love you to do this hobby with me. I, and he had one of those contraptions where it throws the clays in the air. Oh, yeah. So he threw it up, and I went, bang. Poof. Another one, Did you bang. say pull? Did you get to say yeah. pull? Yeah, I said pull. Pull, oh, and then it goes, boom. Two in a row, I went, bang, bang. And he went, always remember, he said, that was a bit easy. Let's put up two. So I went, pull, bang, bang. And he went, okay, thanks. That's enough practice. Go home. <laughs> and this well, there has you been go, Gary. Life, yeah, it's been my life, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's your fact right there. Well, we're moving on to at Evie's Zappos. And this is more of a music-related question. What is the best thing about playing the bass guitar? It hits you where it counts. <laughs> yeah. Good answer. Yeah. Well, I, when I introduce the band on stage, and I always give everybody their moment to shine, I'm very big on that. Everybody has a little thing. And then I introduce the drums, and I always say, this is the bass player's best friend, the drummer and the bass. We are the engine. We drive the band. If you haven't got the two of us, you got nothing. <laughs> and I mean it. Well, I mean it. it. I always say the guitar players get all the glory. Bass players get all the chicks. But in your in your case, you get them. You get everybody. You get everybody. I get everybody. <laughs> and I'm, I, I am I am an organic bass player. I have to say, I'm not a failed guitar player. I don't play with a pick, and 
I am organic. Bass, bass is my instrument. I am a bass player. Yeah, I, I love watching the, the the footage of you of, of being on whether it's Top of the Pops or any of anything any live performance, and you're just pumping away on the bass it, it, with the fingers. That's what I do with the fingers. Absolutely very important. I love it. We're moving on. At there's a lot of people that ask similar questions, so I, I put some together, and I know your audience in Australia, which we have some in the chat right now watching the show, and it's very early for them, or next day, or maybe it's next week over there right now. But at Rarty Price and X O Gorth the Thor, will you ever make it back to Oz for any kind of shows or touring for the new album? Is the Pope Catholic? Um, <laughs> I have been touring for 57 years. And I will be back. Okay. I've had COVID. I've had the injection. I've had a year off because of this. Every day I'm in my front room playing along with my live CD. Of course, I'll be back. I'm not ready to stop yet. I'm, I'm not ready. I'm nowhere near ready to stop. Of course, I, and this will be my 38th tour. 38th tour of Australia. Well, if we could, if there's ever a chance that Alice Cooper and Susie Quattro can do some shows together, I would be the happiest guy in the world. This would be great. And, and, and we'll do a part two of this podcast for sure. Um, this is a very cool question from Kathy Grant. All right. So she's been calling me and, and texting me all week about this. And I don't know anything about it really, but apparently it's very interesting. This Mrs. Beasley and the subsequent photo on your 60th birthday. Is there a story behind that? Yes. Whoa, <laughs> Kathy Grant. Okay. Um, there is a story now. I'm curious. Um, before I came to England, I was still in Cradle. And a friend of mine entered, wanted me to go see a spiritualist lady, which was a friend of hers. Because we, we got talking about the subject. Of, I'm quite psychic myself. I've always been interested in that area. Um, I can read people in five seconds of meeting them. So I have that ability. And she me. wanted yeah. <laughs> She wanted, yeah, I do, yeah, like you. Um, she wanted me to come and meet this lady, and I went to her, and her name was Mrs. Beasley. And I went to her house in Gross Point, just a normal grandma lady, you know, grandma lady. And she read me, and she had a little pad of paper, and she kept writing down stuff. And then when the session was over, she read to me what she had written, and it was up to me to put it together. So she said things like, uh, she told me names of relatives that I'd never heard until I went home and asked my mother. And then my mother confirmed it. And then she said, uh, you're going to be going to England. And I thought, yeah, right. I'm going to go to England. How am I going to get to England? Why am I going to England? And then she said, um, and that came true. And then she said, uh, your first sports car is going to be a blue one. Well, the first sports car that I bought with my ex-husband was a blue Mercedes 280 SL. Uh, and then she said, I see a lot of success with roses. And that one I couldn't figure out. But then the devil in me video clip, which you can watch, anybody can watch on YouTube. Um, one of the parts of that film was me and Moses going across on a screen. But um, everything she said, and I lost a piece of paper. I had a pad of it and I kept it. I took it to England with me and I lost that. But 99% of what she said came absolutely true. So whatever, whether you believe in it or not, how can she tell me I'm going to England? You know, I thought I did. I thought to myself, what do you know? You know, well, maybe, maybe Mrs. To... Beasley is listening to this podcast right now and she will grace us with more views. Thank you very much, Mrs. Beasley. That's a great at the real muddy G and JD Alba, because you've been such an inspire and an influencer for so many other people. What are your biggest inspirations and influences? Cool. Well, Elvis first. Course. Then I was big, 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 big on Otis Redding. I called myself Susie Soul for a while. <laughs> um, Motown, being born and raised in Detroit, Motown, huge. That's in my DNA. My bass playing is very Jamerson. If you listen to it, especially on the new album, you will hear a lot of Jamerson bass line influences. I'm, I'm kind of walking between walking bass and boogie, between oh, those two. Um, What's your go-to bass? What is your go-to bass? My, 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 my precision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that, it's the only bass that you can plug into a recording unit straight in, and it's perfect. Wow. No other bass does that. That's the bass. That's my baby. And who else? Billy Holiday. And for lyrics, 
it was uh, Bob Dylan who I just worship. Yeah, you mentioned him. Fellow Gemini, like you said. I know. And we love our yeah. words. We do. <laughs> well, that kind of dovetails into this section that we have, the one that got away. Because um, I'm going to ask you about a piece of gear that you wish you still had. But for some reason, you had to, you know, you it was lost. It was stolen. You had to sell it. Something. Do you have a bass or an amp or even an effect, any sort of gear that you was the one that got away? I would say <laughs> I had I, I had I had it changed. I had a that first bass that my dad gave me, the 1957 Precision. It came in that beige colored case, the original Fender case. That case got stolen, and I would like it back only for the case got stolen only for one reason because this was in the 60s. It got stolen 68, 69. They left the bass. They took the case. They thought the bass was in there. And I had painted on it because it was the late 60s. You're not going to believe it. I spray painted on this original base case. I'm embarrassed to say it. Say it. The spots yeah. of eternity are square. <laughs> you beatnik, you. You want to be beatnik. You and still want to. <laughs> Can you believe it? This, <laughs> I thought I was so hip. A jerk. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I wish I had that back. <laughs> you know what? Some that base case is somewhere. You know that somewhere in this world, it's still it's it's still laying. And now they know it. Now they know it. So I love it. Well, I was gonna say that red BC rich base that you had on the, the era of Susie and four letter words. No, but then I saw it on a new video. I saw that, that base. Is you that did. the base that you play on the new video? It certainly is. It's on my new Devil and Me video, the, the Devil and Me, the title track from the new album. And when we were getting together to film that, we had to do it in my garage and each person had to go on separately. Um, my son said, go up in your ego room. I have an ego room. And we went and got that based on it was perfect. It's now in my front room. I might take it back on the road. It's a good base. Okay. You know, the, I love that era where the whole band played Red BC Riches. What was well, that all about, right? We had we were sponsored for a while by them. We had pink ones first, the rich bitch, and then they made me the red one, and then everybody got red ones. It was a great era, the matching guitars. And Robert Palmer, excuse me, he came <laughs> to me and he said, what song was that now where all the girls were playing? Uh, 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 addicted to Love. Yeah. He yeah. came to me and he said, oh, by the way, I love all your matching guitars. We said, yes. He said, I just nicked it for my video. <laughs> Thank you. And then he pinched my ass because he was drunk. Oh, good old Robert. Good the old. Things you... <laughs> oh, the 80s. <laughs> Weren't they so misogynistic? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, there is. there's the one that got away. I just, I do. And, and check it out, folks. I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method.